Hello, Margaret here from dataminingdna.com. This video is a walkthrough on how to make a ancestry tree private. So I'm on the home page here. I'm going to pull up a particular tree. I'll pull up this tree. So I'm sitting in the tree at the moment and I want to make this tree private. There is no actual indicator on the main page here as to whether this tree is public or private. So you need to go and look at the tree settings. So to get at the tree settings when you're within a tree, click on the drop down menu here at underneath the tree name and go to tree settings, this item here with the cog. So we come to the tree settings page and you're on the tree info tab. This isn't the tab that we want. We want this second tab here, which is the privacy settings. What I can see in the privacy settings is that this tree is public. So basically you've got a toggle here. You see this public tree, it's green for on. And then down here is private tree and it's just great. This page allows you to toggle between public and private tree. If I want to make this tree private, what I do is just click on the private tree and you notice that public tree becomes grayed out and selected and the private tree is now selected. Scroll down a little bit. This is something that you might skip because it might actually be visible on your screen, but you do have to save the changes. It doesn't take effect immediately just when you toggle it. You have to scroll down a little bit and you have to click the Save Changes button. So in many cases, that's the only action I want to take is to make the tree private, click this private tree button, and click on Save Changes. So I just want to quickly show you another way of getting at the tree settings page from anywhere. So if you're on the home page and you want to get to the tree settings page, rather than go into the tree itself, you can pull up the tree management page. So in the drop down list box under trees, right down at the bottom, this is the final item is the create and manage trees link. Click on that. And this displays all your trees. You may not have as many as me. Now I have many, many research trees. Now with my research trees, these are trees that I haven't completed finding sources. Some of the connections I put in, some of the parents are experimental. And therefore I don't want to lead other ancestry users astray. So I, for my own benefit, I label them as research, Adam's tree. And then I usually make them private. But to get to the tree settings from this page for any given tree, find the tree that you want in the list. And if you click on this link here, you actually go into the tree itself and you have to go to the tree drop down menu and it's a few extra clicks. But if you click on this link on the final column, the manage tree column, that actually takes you straight to the tree settings page for any of these trees. Yeah. So it just reduces a bit of a few clicks for you. Click on manage tree. We're on the tree settings page. We're on the tree info tab. And this is where you would rename the tree if you wanted. And we go to privacy settings. And we see here that this tree, when we first came into it, it had been public. I had set it to private. I toggled the private tree to toggle. And I clicked on save changes. So when we come back into it, that has been taken effect. So it's important to know that by just making your tree private and taking no other action, the individuals in your tree are not completely private. Ancestry is explaining that in this section here. And I also have an explanation in a blog post. I'll just pull it up. Now this particular blog post is the start of a series of an in-depth guide to Ancestry. And we start with the essential Ancestry tree this particular post covers linking your tree, whether making your tree public or private and making your tree searchable or unsearchable and searchable and unsearchable. That's the key. That's what we're going to just talk about now. Here's the question I'm asking. Why would you want an unsearchable tree anyway? So notice that there is this extra checkbox here, which by default, even when you set your tree to being private, it is unset. And it says also prevent your tree from being found in the search index. So by ticking this box, you make your tree unsearchable. The default, even when you make your tree private, is that your tree is still searchable. Just what does that mean? 
I'm on the Ancestry search page, and I'm going to run a general search for a particular individual. Go, and I'll just give a birth year, and I'm going to hit search. I'm focusing all collections, and this is a general search across the entire record collection. You notice that if you don't do search all records, you do have the option here of doing a search on trees, but that particular search is only on public member trees. Now I'm doing a search all records. So I'm just going to click search here, and now I'm going to narrow it down from what's being shown to me, which is lots of civil registration, birth records, etc. Um, I'm going to filter down over here on the left, down to family trees. And this is what I want to show you. You see this first tree here is a public tree. If I click on view all to see all these six trees, lots of details from this first tree, the father and the mother and the spouse, notice that they're shown. Similar here, but now notice we have James Gamble. We're shown the birth year, we're shown the birth location details. Notice that I'm not being shown father, mother, spouse, who I happen to know are in that particular tree. It is a private tree, but I know what's I know the details in it. If I scroll down a little bit, here we have a much bigger tree that's the owner's called the simple tree, first nineteen eleven, Bell Turf but Cavan Ireland. I'm pretty sure that this is the right match, but this is a private tree. Um no publicly available family members. So what I can see from a private tree when I'm doing a search is the birth details, birth year and location. I'm not seeing any other connections, but what I can do from here is I can contact the tree owner. So Ancestry is not displaying the tree owner's name here, but they are giving me a way of using the Ancestry messaging system to send a message to the tree owner saying, I'm very interested in your tree. I understand it's private. Perhaps we can share information because I think I've got the same person in my tree. What I can also do here is I can click on the tree. And here you notice that I actually do get a bit more information about the tree owner. Quite specifically, I get the username of the tree owner. But just be aware of that as to how private you want your tree to be. And then once again, I'm given this contact information. So the fact that these trees, these private trees, were turning up in the search results is because the tree is set to being searchable. And if we go back to the privacy settings, that is what this is about. You're setting your tree to private. Do you also want to prevent your tree from being found in the search index so it won't come up at all in that search list? You quite possibly don't want to do that. You may want to communicate with other individuals, with other ancestry uh, members who are particularly interested, and you may be quite happy when you're sent a message with somebody who is genuinely interested in what they can see, you might be happy to share your tree with them. But if you want your tree to be effectively anonymous, you need to click this button. And the final thing I will note is down here. So when you toggle your tree from public to private, or indeed from private back to public, that change takes place immediately. The moment you toggle your tree to private, an ancestry member will not be able to browse your tree. The search indexes, that takes time to take effect. Ancestry is saying it usually takes about a month or more. So if you have a public tree that you've been working away with for months and months and months, and you decide that you want to make it private and unsearchable, just be aware that you make it private, that will become into effect immediately. But it will take a month or more for it to drop out of the search index and not to be available in search results, which means that if you want complete privacy, when you create your tree, come in here and set it to private and then click the box to prevent your tree from being found in the search index. If you do jump to this uh, article, uh, which is effectively as chapter one in our guide to using Ancestry and making the most out of your Ancestry research, it's a growing number of chapters now. And if you're interested in getting notifications of when we drop a new chapter, which is about once a week until we're, we're finished, if you go down to the bottom of any of the chapters and put in your email and subscribe to the guide, we'll send you a notification when we publish a new chapter. 
So I hope that helps and best of luck with your research.